All right, very well. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining in today. And I'm Giuseppe Basile, also known as the VIP Stalker, and we are starting here a new session. I'm going to open the chat and then uh, I'll be there with you. Hope everything is good. Let's see who's, uh, who's joining here, who's joined here today. Welcome back. We have, welcome Mervin, Horace, welcome. Liv Lopez, Mervin, Roland, Desi, Aaron, welcome Aaron. Mauricio, if you're still there, hi Greg, welcome in. All right, so welcome everyone. This is the FX Free Tokyo Open Live Room. It's a daily show where we uh, feature real trading and real analysis with me. I'm Giuseppe Basile. Good morning, Mervin. Good morning, FX Ambassador. Good night, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. We feature real trading at the very heart of the Asian session, actually uh, well into it or well into the uh, well into it when, when it comes to opportunities. This is a daily show from Sunday to Thursday, and this week is going to be the last week we are going to have this show from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. All right, and I'm going to give you some additional information that's going to happen from next Sunday. Welcome, Scott. Good evening. Uh, interesting day today in New York. Your session. Definitely it was a very good, interesting day, and we're going to review that. Good evening, hello Gary. Let's wait a little bit here. So in the meantime, I will, um, as usual, I will. Um, we'll talk about risk. Risk is the most important thing is in trading. Most of you trade successfully or want to do that. I have already understood that trading. Good morning, everyone. Trading is the most important aspect of, of uh, risk is most, is, risk management is the most important aspect of risk of trading and um, and if you learn to manage risk, everything else will come into will just fall into place. Now, trading forex and its derivatives, futures options and CFDs, just to mention a few, and other instruments or retail of exchange transactions involve substantial risk of loss and it is not suitable for all investors. You might lose all or more of your initial investment. You can get into debt, indeed, if you're not careful, because leverage can work for you as well as against you. It magnifies gains as well as losses. And the fact that a lot of uh, accounts, uh, Forex accounts, can be open with very, very high leverage should not lure you into necessarily doing that. I have a 1 to 2 to 200 account, Forex account, one of the accounts I have. And you know, I barely, I at least 1% of my account, of my actual money on the account. So uh, in order to be, you know, in order to be, uh, in order to be profitable, of course, it depends also on the size of the account. If you have small, uh, if you have small, a small account, it's not that risking 5% or 10% on a trade can help you. Okay, so leverage can work for you as well as against you, and it magnifies gains as well as losses. Past performance is not necessarily negative for future results. Please also review a free disc disclosure on the website. The information I'm going to provide, including commentary, trade ideas, uh, are and should not be relied upon as a substitute for extensive independent research, which should be performed before making your investment decision. All the information I'm providing here and the material is for your general information and educational purposes. I, Giuseppe Basile, FIP Stalker Consulting Incorporated, FX Suite, will not be responsible for any losses incurred on investments made by attendees as a result of any information in this webinar. Welcome, everyone. I see uh, good day. Joe, Gary, welcome in. Hi, Joe. Um, sorry you are late, no problems, we're just starting, looking uh, for good moves for Australian dollar with GDP coming soon, possibly. Uh, that market has been already already moving. Now, before I continue, let me, uh, let me um, give uh, some uh, information here. From next Sunday, okay, from next Sunday, Sunday the 7th, March the 7th, we're going to, sorry, March the 6th, Sunday, March the 6th. You're going to do a time change. You're going to go from 7 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. And this is going to be even 
better in terms of uh, looking at the opportunities as they are developing and then treating them at the Tokyo Open. Okay, so keep it in mind. I'm going to repeat this uh, from next Sunday, March the 6th. This show is going to start from 7 p.m. and will go to 7.45 p.m. All right. And this is uh, a win-win-win for uh, everyone. You'll be more prepared for the Tokyo Open. Um, that would be uh, participants in Europe who are serious about trading and they don't go to sleep uh, at midnight, but uh, they rather, uh, or 11, and they rather wait and trade the Tokyo session. I actually wake up three times a week at 2 a.m. to trade the, U the European uh, Open session. And uh, I'm based in Canada. And um, if you're serious about trading and you want to trade the Forex, that's what you have to do. Okay. So I'll keep repeating this um, uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday as well. Uh, keep that in mind. You will get the uh, uh, you will get the information also on uh, on FS Street as well. Okay. Very good. Thanks for joining again. Hello, Joe Gary. Uh, Mervin, Craig, Oras, Label, Mervin, Roland, Desi, R, Aaron, uh, Mr. Carrillo, welcome if you're there and uh, good day. So let's uh, let's dive into the chart and let's look at what has happened. Uh, what has happened today? Before I uh, before we do that, uh, hello everyone. I'm uh, the Fib Stalker. Thanks for joining in and let's get into the charts here. All right. Uh, I also, also another uh, uh, little uh, consideration. I don't know if you know the news, but basically, basically, uh, um, trade station is basically acting in the forex market uh, business. And um, I don't know if it's uh, likely or unlikely, starting from March the 4th, so uh, from Sunday the 6th actually, we are going to see on my charts OENDA data feed. Now, I, I'm not aware of the quality of the OENDA, OENDA data feed, but, um, <laughs> but the, uh, the um, and I'm, I'm laughing at the comment of Peter, the open actually, at the, at the open, good idea, G. Uh, but, you know, very often though, you know, we get, we get opportunity also uh, after that. So um, anyway, I won't comment on this. What I was commenting on is that Trade Station is exiting the Forex business and basically they're going to pass their client on to Oenda. Now, in terms of business, I won't comment that. In terms of data, that's what, it, what I'm interested in too, because all my consideration are based on levels, right? So uh, from next Sunday, we're gonna see the OANDA data feed on my charts. Um, how that is going to work, I don't know, uh, but I'm already researching for other solutions as well. So I might move away from TradeStation and I'm considering other platforms as well. All right, and um, they're just for you to know. All right, so let's start from the euro. So Joe is asking, please repeat that, uh, G. Okay, so let me repeat that again. Trade Station, which is one of the uh, brokers, uh, historical brokers, I think they have a very good platform. And that's the platform that you see, that's my uh, my charts here are with Trade Station, not to be uh, not to be confounded with the trading station, which is the FXCM uh, platform. Don't don't uh, don't mix the two. Trade station, which is what you see here, these charts. It's a it's a platform, and it's also a brokerage. And I've been with Trade Station for a few years now. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see what happens with the, um, with your end data feed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, and I will take a decision based on that, okay? So let's start the review of these markets. Um, and I still have the trade station Forex feed here, which is reasonable. And so 
Uh, what happened in this market is that the uh, weekly uh, and daily longs we here finally have been negated. This market has gone into a uh, second target that we have identified uh, on a, of a move that we identified yesterday. You will remember that yesterday we mentioned that this market is actually uh, after the fact, not before the fact, but after the fact. This market, we identified this move, but when we identify this move, even after the market, they're always useful. Why? Because we can keep studying the market and seeing what happens. So as you can see, it's not a case that a reaction came just at that second target where they were profit taking. If this market continues lower, it's going to retest. And if it retests successfully this level, um, either you know during the Tokyo Open, but better during the European Open, and this level is respected here, we might see a continuation lower. Into what? Into 108.06 and 107.60. All right. So that's what we are seeing here in the euro dollar, and this market could uh, keep sliding uh, down here. And there was an opportunity in the morning yesterday uh, around these highs, uh, and the market went right into that second target there okay so there is nothing holding this price at the moment there's nothing trying to buy this price at the moment any reaction you're going to see are profit taking reactions or are driven by the smaller time frames all right here's our japanese yen of course if the euro moves lower the other japanese yen moves higher and uh, we are seeing a nice move higher i love this uh, even if i'm not participating here what i want to see as you know I want to see uh, higher prices here. I want to see this market trade into uh, into this first and second target, and then possibly into that 116.33, which is the first level that I'm looking for in this market for shorts. Okay, so the uh, this market is clearly moving higher. I'm uh, I'm sorry. I don't know if you can uh, see the charts here at the moment. Uh, bear with me. So I don't know if this is going to continue and where it's going to stop, but I know that there are two levels I'm going to hawkishly um, watch. One is the 16.33, and the other one is going to be the 118.40. Uh, so we know those levels very well. We know those levels are in place. In play, if you are long, this market is likely going to be to 114.70 and even higher. Okay, we need to get this market. Um, we need to get this market into those areas of resistance. And if that happens, this market is gonna is gonna offer great opportunities to for uh, for a short. Okay, this market is not a long. As you know very well now, if you have followed my analysis uh, since a few um, a few weeks here, you know that I'm bearish about US dollar Japanese yen, uh, and not because I believe the dollar has to go down. It's because the uh, this market has shown itself that you know it needs to uh, uh, it needs to uh, it has it does not have any support uh, from the weekly, and when that happens, it means that you know this market is uh, doomed to uh, to move lower so believe it or not i'm going i'm not going to consider this as a start of anything in fact is is coming out of nowhere here this is just pure profit taking here welcome pedro um and uh, I, I don't think I can see everyone. Peter, for example, does not show up on the list. It's very odd. And uh, and so, um, uh, have you seen the new yen story on Bloomberg? No, I don't follow stories. I follow price. Sorry, good day. Um, but you can uh, you can post a link. We can review that together. I, I I just look at charts. I tend to, and it's not because uh, I'm lazy or because it's it's a choice. And uh, I find comfort recently also, you know, uh, with um, with the speech from uh, Jake Bernstein at the in New York um, uh, New York uh, Traders Expo, and he clearly stated 
he clearly said, by the way, Pedro, where are you at the, uh, where are you at the uh, traders show? Because I haven't seen you. So the, what Jack Bernstein said is that he avoids, he avoids uh, to talk to other traders, he avoids news, he avoids everything. And the reason why he does that is not because he is um, better than others or he is, you know, it's not about contempt. It's about not being influenced. And uh, sorry, good day. I haven't seen that story. I, I'm not really very interested in stories and and um, and also in uh, in fundamentals, to be honest with you, because the market is going to tell us what he wants to do. I mean, uh, let's let's. Uh, this is a very good point, actually. Let me let me uh, let me uh, talk about this a little bit here, and let's speak charts. Okay, let's speak. Let's speak. Um, Let's speak price. Let's don't speak, and then I'll review that uh, that article as well with that video. But let's speak price, all right? Now let's look at the US dollar Canadian dollar because it's a recent example. It's a very, very, you know, uh, uh, clear example here. We had an extension long first and second target. Market went above that second target, and then, you know, the next participation from the weekly time frame happened. And then this guy did not did, did not hold. Now, if I had to, so they participated here at 137, and then they gave up. Now, if I had to only take into consideration all the bad news that are coming out from Canada and uh, lower price of oil and Canada in a recession and so on, I should not have uh, considered, not even considered the possibility of shots. Look at what the hap happened here. So do I care about news? No. So, <coughs> absolutely good day. In the end, uh, price matters. No, I didn't have the chance. I was very busy that week working. I really wanted to go. Uh, Pedro, I mean, I, I understand because, you know, sometimes we plan things and, uh, and unfortunately, um, you know, the, uh, the plans are not always as we, uh, as we uh, plan that. But it was a very, it was a very good, uh, it was a very good, um, uh, very good uh, show, I have to say. Uh, so before I get into that, let me switch here and let's let's look at this news. Japan's three biggest banks declare yen's depreciation is over. <laughs> and what do you take? And what's your take from here? Okay, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that the big banks are are lying here. But guys, I mean manipulation is the name of the the name of the of the game. And I'm not saying that you know. They are willingly putting this information out to, to, um, to, um, uh, you know, to, to actually um, uh, kind of uh, put put people uh, uh, in uh, direct people in in different uh, in different direction. Let's look at charts. Yes, we had a double top on top of nothing, but you know, look at also what we had before. Suddenly, this depreciation is coming to an end. Suddenly, suddenly. I mean, you know, I don't believe this. So sorry. Uh, the best thing to do is not follow those kind of news. We will see. We will see. And see, the risk is very, very limited because you're going to act only in two specific uh, two specific levels. So let me uh, let me switch again there and. Uh, uh, so I, I'm not uh, sorry to sorry to uh, to discard it like that, but I'm not even going to read it <laughs> because uh, you know price will tell price will tell the truth, and we know very well that sometimes these news you know are um, kind of um, you know are uh, are actually we, we don't know how they are going to be used, but price will tell us right now. And that's a very good that's a very good observation there because see if price continues higher and breaks the 1640 and then breaks the 18, then you know I might believe that that's true. But am I going to trade on what three banks have said? Right. So um, price will, uh, as uh, FX ambassador is uh, is suggesting, that price will tell because see. If there were plans, or if there was even the possibility, because don't think that 
Japan is the only player in this equation. There is US dollar, there is another player in this equation here. So don't believe these stories. Um, uh, you know, good day, I, I straight, I mean, I, I would say I would just, without even read that. I mean, the title itself, I mean, it's a joke, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I might be wrong, but let uh, price, let us uh, have price speaking. And what price has spoke, spoken already is that, see, if, tell me one thing, if, if, if the move lower in uh, US dollar, uh, Japanese yen was finished, why did let uh, let let this market slip? Why algos have let this market slip below this level? Why they didn't pick it up here? You know, if it was something that was in the news or something that 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 you know already was already known within the banking system. So, sorry, this is this is a joke. So I don't believe that, and price will tell. Okay. So thanks for sharing that. That was very that was very useful because it allows us to make um, a point. Of course, I'm not saying that I'm uh, always 100% uh, right. And who says that? Uh, if someone says that to you, just run away the other side. I'm not that kind of. Uh, I don't do that, those kind of statements. But you have to be very very careful in what is put out there. And again, I'm not saying that they are not saying the truth, but you know, for price to follow up, you need someone who buys, and you need, uh, you know, you need you need follow up from price. So they may even be saying the truth, but maybe they don't, they won't have the strength to support that price. So I don't know. To me, it's uh, I wouldn't say manipulation, but trying to uh, trying to um, to actually move the uh, ideas and uh, and address. Um, the way uh, the yen should be traded. It might be a desperate move as well. I mean, we can see a lot of things into it. I don't know. I'm not going to read that because, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. And 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 to be honest, even if I read that, at the end, I would stick to uh, stick to price. So what price is telling us here? Long participation, first and second target are above us. Yes, this is in line with what the banks are saying, but... You know the the the, the price has, has, has said that, and again, you know, it, it is interesting the timing sometimes with which uh, this um, these uh, news are uh, are taken out. And I'll I'll stop there because you know, uh, if there is one thing that I've learned about this market is that um, the um, the conflict of interest it's a it's a big big huge problem and indeed do you want do you want the proof the proof is that when I started my my start my masters in finance the very first the very first uh, discipline that we had to study was Eric's Eric's <laughs> can you think about that all right so I leave it there now let's uh, let's review the Australian Japanese yen here that finally is breaking out that um, above the level you would you will remember that I mentioned that this market had a weekly uh, participation long and that's the reason why I was and have been and, and have stayed bullish within that level why because this market when you when you open your bigger chart you see that this market has been respecting and had a potential long so the direction in this market was not short has been always has been always long okay the only problem is when this uh, level would give way and it is giving way now and I also mentioned yes if you remember and you remember, yes, uh, this market was pushing lower here and said the second target. Oh, sorry, you're not seeing the charts. You're right. Here we go. Let's um, let's share the charts. So let me see what you have um, what you have lost there. I was talking, but I did not show um, uh, the uh, the trade. So I'm glad Greg there participated to this long 21 pips of risk. That's not too bad. That's not too bad, Greg. And of course, now you're gonna you're gonna keep this trade, and this trade has the potential, you know, 
This trade has the potential to get into 83.60, of course. I'm talking about the Australian dollar Japanese yen here. And before I showed the weekly, I said in the last few two weeks, basically, I've been saying that this market is a long. Why? Because this market has traded longs and has confirmed long as well. Because it traded this 80.23 level here once, and then it has confirmed, traded twice, and then on the daily, this market has been pushed higher. Okay, let me take some notes here because I want to write a little article at the end of uh, this session here. So congrats to all of you who believed in this trade uh, and believed in uh, the presence of algos there. The second uh, test was the dangerous test. The, th the third test was a, was a piece of cake. It was a glass of water. And uh, the market just um, respected that level. Congrats, Greg for that trade, this free trade, so keep it, and 83.60 is going to be uh, the first target there, but this market has the potential now to go much higher, so tomorrow, tomorrow news might help this market to so moving higher, it's clearly moving in the direction of the news already, so uh, I would more inclined to believe that the news is going to come um, in the direction of the Australian dollar Japanese yen rather than against it and even if the Japanese yen is recovering against US dollar doesn't mean that you know and in fact it's moving you know this chart is telling a totally different story that the Australian dollar is indeed becoming stronger on the Japanese yen all right so you have to trust these trades and this connects very nicely to that New Zealand dollar US dollar you are seeing a reaction now, but today has been a day where basically this market has been pushing, uh, been pushing higher. So this trade that we had here at 65.50, it's still valid, okay? Still valid, and although you see this kind of reversals here, and we should see whether uh, shorts are in play here, and shorts are not in play, so that's that's a profit taking or a move from the smaller time frame. So, nothing serious there, really. Um, you know, these kind of trades um, are uh, trades that uh, no, you should uh, you should actually take them seriously and keep them. So, all the Australian dollar related uh, are um, related uh, pair. Are anticipating a, a strength in the Australian dollar. Look at the Euro Australian dollar, for example. Now it's dipped into that 151.10. And where this market is going? Well, this market is already uh, putting in jeopardy the level there, and this market has a potential to go much lower when we look at it on a larger time frame. Okay, and that level is 140.73, believe it or not. And this can happen very, very quickly here in, in a month, uh, month's time. All right. And if we look at the other, if you look at the other market as well, we will see that uh, basically Australian dollar is pushing higher uh, all over uh, the board. Maybe anticipating something for tomorrow. We don't know. We, we don't trade news. We trade in anticipation of the news. And a great example, I believe, here is the Australian dollar Japanese yen, which has been preparing for longs, waiting, but with a long bias, and now start moving higher. Would you say that who else has big pockets and inciting, inciting information it's placed in the direction, in the right direction here? We will see that tomorrow. But I would, uh, I would, uh, I would bet so. Peter, what do you think about that? Right, I see, I see other people joining in here. Greg, Joe, Scott, Mervin, Jax, Peter, FX Ambassador, Label, Femom, Roland, Sorry, Pedro, Jason, um, Mervin, Lee, Hailey, Aaron, Gary, Good Day, um, Mauricio, if he's there, Horace, hi, Kerry. So, the, what, we, what we have mentioned here is that the Australian dollar, the US dollar is basically um, all over the board. It's actually strong. Okay. All right. So, uh, the Euro Canadian dollar, 
it's correcting here and it keeps correcting and we know where it is going we have mentioned that level uh, you know a few weeks back it's 142 143 and all these market uh, are in a rush are moving very very quickly here so it's um, it's um, it it's it's strange to see the euro canadian dollar correcting lower so but you know that tells the story i mean canada is not in a in a in a good shape at the moment the country is in a recession formally but the eurozone obviously it's uh, it's uh, even uh, even in a in a in a in a worse situation there so will this market uh, will this market rally before get before getting into that level you know uh, for the way they are moving i would i wouldn't anticipate that and whenever we can not in, in the fib stalker matters whenever we can not uh, trade the levels we we actually trade continuations at the open of the European session and US session, which are the, the session that are more um, uh, more active. So it's very uh, it's very it's not easy to show that during uh, a Tokyo a Tokyo session. Sometimes there are there are opportunities for this kind of signal also in the Tokyo session. Anyway. So we reviewed uh, Euro CAD, uh, uh, US dollar, uh, Canadian dollar. It's moving at the moment the same way. Once these weekly are gone, we know that this market has the potential to retrace, you know, all the way uh, from uh, July lows here. And you know, I've been talking to some uh, to some friends, and they asked me how they can edge and whether it's it's good to buy. It's, too, it's, it's good to buy US dollar, but actually, see when when you don't follow this market every day, you don't understand what's going on. And this is key, guys. I mean, a lot of people still believe that the US dollar Canadian dollar is going higher, while we know we are in the know, and we believe, on the other hand, that this market is going to correct into 120. So I have friends asking me uh, Giuseppe help me how how can I uh, what do you suggest in six months time I have to travel and spend US dollar should I uh, should I buy now you told me a few weeks ago that we were going to 158 I said yes I told you and I also showed you that at that time there was a, a reasonable support from the weeklies but now what I'm telling you is that you know that reasonable support is gone and this market has the potential. It's not going to happen in one month or in one week. Sorry, it would happen in one month though. But eventually, this market is going to move into this 120.52. Uh, now, it would be nice to see a reaction. It would be nice to see a reaction and extension and extension trading here. That would be nice. It would be fantastic. Actually, it would be uh, you know an opportunity to establish our position. Will that happen? We don't know, and so we have to have another way to enter these trades and this market that keeps sliding lower. Okay, and again, the best ways to enter this market is at the European Open and the US. So, the European Open is even better very often. Okay, so the Australian dollar, US dollar uh, came back to that level, and again. Uh, you know, I mentioned in the last few days that at least don't trust the way this market is moving. It's respecting this extension short here, which has traded three times now, and it has given a very good uh, short-term trades here. Uh, these were five unit of risk or so. But then, you know, this market instead of continuing lower, has actually, uh, you know, we came back all the way into this level again. So uh, it's very, it's very difficult to trust this market. It's only for uh, for very, very quick and brief moves. Okay. For those of you who actually have joined uh, a little bit late here, let me, uh, let me, um, uh, let me do this announcement again, if you allow me. Uh, because this is very important, otherwise some of you might, uh, might actually uh, lose uh, the, um, uh, you know, lose maybe opportunities or an opportunity to uh, to come 
in the room from next Sunday, March the 6th. We are going to uh, change time. We're going to start a little bit early. It's going to be 7 p.m. And uh, the show is going to last 45 minutes. We have five, four, 40 minutes of analysis and five minutes of recap. And there are a number of reasons why we are uh, we are doing that from an organizational point of view. And this would allow also some of the people in Europe who are serious about trading uh, and want to um, uh, review the analysis and get prepared for the Tokyo Open uh, and or into the Tokyo Open. Uh, we trade, I tend to trade a little bit later, around 8 uh, p.m. EST when we have signals. They tend to cluster more around uh, 7.30, 8.30 area for me, for what I do, for uh, for, for the FIP stalker methods. So keep this in mind from next week, Sunday. We're not going to start at 8 p.m. EST, but it's going to be 7 p.m. EST, okay? There's no rate hike in March, and that is in commodity countries improve. US dollar will see further depreciation. Well, that's all to be seen, Jason. Thanks for sharing that. But that's all to be seen. That's uh, that's an opinion for what uh, concerns me, and a respectable opinion. I'm not I'm not uh, discarding it. I'm just saying that, you know, I would rather. Um, see, see, we we don't. We, there is one thing we don't we don't perceive that this that. These opinions, they uh, mine or undermine uh, our trading decisions. And so that's the reason why I don't even want to consider those or talk about those. I don't even read about those in relation to trading. I, mean, I read those in relation to other aspects. But see, I mean, because if I fix myself or think that the US dollar is going to go lower and everything else is going to go higher, um, you know, I will uh, I will be influenced when I have to consider the indication from the charts. Now, if I look at US dollar Japanese yen, for example, or the or uh, the, la uh, the latest development, the euro dollar, I don't see that, Jason. I see, you know, uh, I see something uh, completely different. You might see uh, um, a lateral market here, but you know, we saw the weekly taking profits here and we saw the weekly failing the weekly shots failing uh, on this on this um, on this profit taking here bar here so and that's what i see of course and i see this on price i don't see this because i uh, i look at uh, at news so i think we should always keep ourselves in check when we consider and make uh, statements or uh, consideration. If it's it is okay, if you can make that consideration without being influenced, I'm not able to. And as I always uh, say, you know, uh, for those of you who are able to integrate uh, consistently, consistently is the key word. Integrate consistently um, um, uh, fundamental analysis into trading because fundamental analysis does not give us as an entry stop and a target while uh, taking analysis does and and even when we are wrong we can always jump on uh, on top of uh, of the next move either short term or trying to to uh, to ride the move once we have target so um I mean, I think it's very, very important, and uh, and uh, and I, I thank you for sharing that. But uh, I, I know very few people who are able to consistently integrate their fundamental analysis with their technical analysis. So you should be very, very, very careful there. So let's make um, a quick uh, time check there. It's um, eight forty. So what I'll do. I will, uh, I will actually start uh, a recap uh, right now. But before I do that, let me uh, um, let me get into the SP500 here. And uh, uh, this market, uh, for those who have followed my analysis and know my work, uh, as you know, uh, you know, 2000, 2000 highs to highs, we captured that measured move to new highs. We actually captured. Um, no, it's going to be seven. It's always going to be seven um, uh, p.m. EST. 
uh, sorry, 7 p.m. EST. We are going to keep the the Eastern time for the show. Okay, and for the session, GMT session, yes, we're going to be uh, we're going to be affected, but the show will stay with the EST time. We're not going to change the time. Now, when we look at the uh, when we look at the SP five hundred here, this area has been respected once. It has been confirmed, and then the market was not capable of piercing that seventeen ninety seven. Sorry, guys, we're still in lungs, and believe it or not, this market could go to new highs. Okay, into twenty two hundred and potentially twenty four hundred. Believe it or not. And when we look at this market on the small left time frame, we had we have uh, an extension long that has pushed price into this um, this short area. Didn't come into play, and this market has the potential to to move prices higher here. So I think we have to be very very careful with the shorts here. The market is going to 2000th century. Okay. Um, it is uh, it is not only you thanks for mentioning that and uh, these are the charts so as i was mentioning there was participation at this 1895 plus plus went into 1966 is going now to 2000 century i also showed the weekly chart and i showed that the market had participation in this area it has confirmed here and price and this level was defended we don't know who came into this Market maybe uh, you know the um, president's group for financial markets came into this market. We don't know. All right. So uh, so for what concerns the review what we did we reviewed the euro the euro dollar we confirmed that the weekly daily are not pushing uh, are not participating long in this market. The dailies have been pushing this price lower into that second target. The next level that I want you to watch, even during this uh, Wednesday uh, session, uh, EU session, is going to be the 0896. Okay, 0809 level here. We get participation at the level, we're, we're continuing lower. So that's a setup for you for the European session. We then review the, just closed it very well, well done. So we reviewed the US dollar Japanese yen here. And this market has pushed higher trading uh, daily longs here and pushing higher at the moment. We're going to look at 16, 116.30, 118.40. These are the two levels that uh, that are interesting for us. The, uh, after that, we spoke about the Australian dollar Japanese yen, which has been trading between 80 and 82. Third test, Phillies trade, market moving higher into what? Into the first area, the 352, but this market has the potential to continue higher. We also mentioned how the Australian dollar is preparing all over the board, trading against, um, trading with strength against all the uh, the major pairs there: uh, U.S. dollar, uh, euro, as well as the Japanese yen. Seemingly anticipating some very good news for the Australian dollar as we uh, as we move. So keep your positions here if you are long the Australian dollars in, in the pairs. New Zealand US, uh, US dollar here, still trading longs. The shorts are not in play on the daily. Uh, you should keep this, uh, this long going. And then we spoke about the sliding uh, Euro Australian dollar is gonna correct even lower here and it's, uh, it's piercing that area. And the Australian dollar, US dollar, which is not very, cannot be trusted and should only be traded on a very short time frame. All right, so this uh, this review today, uh, I'm very happy, um, you know, you, um, you are here today. The, keep in mind the changes we're gonna have next week. Thanks, Gary, if I'm home. Peter, Joe, Pedro, Scott, FX Ambassador, Jason, Kerry, Greg, Mervin, Jax, Label, Lopez, Roland, Sorry, I'm late. We will one day know your uh, your name. Desi, Mervin, Lee, Aaron. Good day, Mauricio, Zoras, Sinatra, 
and uh, keep in mind the um, the change we're gonna have from uh, from next week. That's uh, that's very important, and um, uh, you know you will see additional changes in my uh, charting as well. Um, so from next week, March the sixth, time change. We start at seven p.m. EST. And you will see some changes in my charts as well as I'm evaluating another uh, another charting platform because, as you might know, Trade Station has decided to exit the forex business and selling its business to Oenda. So we are going to get the Oenda data feed. I don't know how it's going to work for me, and in case we will have some changes, but uh, there should be no impact anyway. All right, so thanks a lot. And again, if you are interested, I just want to remind you that uh, in May I'm going to start a, a program, a coaching, uh, a Philip Soccer Methods coaching program. It's a seven months uh, program. It's not a course, it's a program. I help people are actively reaching their objectives. And I believe all around you, there are a number of people who have made a very important shift in their uh, mind shifts when it comes to trading. Right, so thanks a lot, guys, and uh, have, a, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow as usual. Remember, tomorrow it's 8 p.m. still, but from Sunday, and also Thursday, 8 p.m. EST, from Sunday, we're going to move to 7 um, p.m. EST. All right, thank you very much, and uh, have a great one. Bye-bye now.